You remember those stitch and glue plans you could use to build a whole pram out of plywood in your garage? What if someone stuck with the plywood theme and scaled it all the way up to a sleek and sexy 40 footer for the ocean? When most sailors picture a modern 39-foot performance cruiser, they imagine something that came out of a giant fiberglass mold. Gel coat sprayed in, layers of fiberglass cloth, polyester resin, core materials maybe, vacuum bagging if the yard is fancy, and then out pops a hull ready for fairing and paint. That's the story of most mass-produced boats on the market today. But not this one. The RM1180 is different, and it's different on purpose. I'll show you around the boat that I got on in Annapolis while I explain the pros and cons of what the plywood is going on here. The RM1180 was designed by Marc Lombard and built in France. It's a boat that challenges some deeply entrenched assumptions about what a modern performance cruising sailboat should be made of. Instead of a conventional fiberglass hull, RM builds the 1180 with a structure based on marine plywood, bonded and encapsulated in epoxy. Yes, plywood, but this isn't the plywood you pick up at the building supply store. This is CNC cut, marine grade, selected for grain consistency, bonded under controlled conditions, then fully sealed and reinforced. It is plywood as a structural composite, not as plywood as cheap as sheet metal. The process starts with cutting precise hull panels on CNC machines. Those flat panels are assembled on a jig, like an aircraft wing frame. Instead of laying resin in a mold, RM constructs the hull from these interlocking panels, all bonded together using thickened epoxy, and then the entire hull is laminated inside and outside with fiberglass and epoxy. The results are not raw wood. You don't see wood. You don't maintain wood. You don't even interact with the wood. You interact with a stiff, light, perfectly sealed composite hull. And on the RM1180 specifically, the story goes even further. A lot of their boats are just the plywood. In this boat, the lower sections of the hull, the parts that deal with impacts and grounding loads and slamming, are plywood epoxy composite. The top sides, the upper parts of the hull where you see the dramatic flare and modern shape of this boat, are built using an epoxy glass composite, just like most high-end race boats. In other words, the 1180 is a hybrid. The bottom is plywood composite for stiffness and resilience, and the top sides use molded composite for shape, refinement, and weight distribution. This allows the hull to have that aggressive sculpted form that's become part of the RM identity. Wide shoulders, hard chines, volume forward, and that very recognizable style. So why go through all this trouble at all when the rest of the production sailboat world seems content with fiberglass hull molds that they can reuse hundreds of times? For them, it's weight and stiffness. They're the two big answers. Plywood bonded with epoxy can produce an extremely stiff hull structure without needing heavy internal grid systems to reinforce it. The wood fibers in very controlled orientation act like a natural reinforcement layer. When encapsulated in epoxy, the material gains both protection and mechanical efficiency. This reduces flexing in the hull while you're underway. Less flexing means better performance, especially upwind in a chop. And then there's insulation. A traditional fiberglass hull is basically cold plastic. On a chilly night at anchor, you can feel the cold radiate through the cabin. On a hot day in the tropics, the sun heats the hull, and that heat passes straight through to the interior. But plywood has a natural thermal insulation property. This means the cabin stays warmer in cold climates and cooler in hot ones. Condensation inside is also dramatically reduced. It just feels different on these boats. It's more comfortable, it's quieter, it's more house-like, especially on a long passage. There's also a repair philosophy baked into this recipe. If a fiberglass hull suffers damage, especially in a cord laminate, repairs can get complicated. You need the right materials, the right conditions and temperatures, the right tools. But plywood epoxy construction can be repaired almost anywhere in the world using widely available materials and well understood methods. For a serious offshore cruiser, that's going to matter. A boat that's truly going to go places should be repairable far away from any specialized service center. But as soon as we talk about wood in boats, people get nervous, obviously for good reason. 
They think about rot. They imagine wood swelling. They imagine furniture grade varnish that needs constant attention. That part is worth clarifying here. None of that applies to this boat. On the RM1180, the plywood's not exposed. It's entirely encapsulated in epoxy, the same way you'd seal a carbon mast or a foam cord rudder. As long as the epoxy shell remains intact and RM did a good job, then the wood never contacts moisture. And because RM paints the hull rather than gel coating it, touch-ups and surface refinishing are actually pretty straightforward. If you scratch the paint, you can repaint the scratch. If you scratch gel coat, you might be sanding and color matching for weeks and probably still never get it right. Now, of course, there are challenges to this. This is not a system you can mass produce at scale. It requires trained craftspeople. It takes time. It's more expensive in labor hours than spraying resin into a mold. RM is not a high volume builder and they say they don't wanna be. Their boats cost more to produce. They position themselves differently in the market, not as a luxury brand with shiny teak cabinetry and glossy varnish everywhere, but as a performance cruising brand that values efficiency, speed, and comfort underway, and of course, long-term reliability. And then there's the hybrid aspect. Some sailors love that the 1180 uses plywood where strength and insulation matter and composite fiberglass where shaping and form and stability matter. Others would prefer a single material hull for simplicity, and that's a fair debate. Hybrid construction requires thoughtful engineering, but here it has allowed RM to achieve shapes and weight targets that would be much harder in pure plywood and much more expensive in full carbon or high-end laminates. Let's talk about how this boat actually feels underway. The 1180 has a relatively light displacement for her size, a powerful sail plan, and a chined hull that carries the beam well aft. This gives it stability without resorting to extreme ballast weight. It's a boat that likes to sail flat and fast. In moderate wind, you're not coaxing it along. You're reducing sail earlier than you might have expected to. And that's exactly what a performance cruiser is supposed to do. They aren't supposed to rely on big engines or big fuel tanks. They're supposed to sail. Down below, the styling is unmistakably French modern. Light surfaces, big natural light from those large hull windows, and a clean architectural feel to the interior. The warmth comes not from varnish and heavy joinery, but from the underlying structure of the boat itself. The plywood bulkheads you see are not decorative panels, they're all structural. The boat's strength is in the furniture. It feels integrated, purposeful, like everything inside is contributing to the integrity of this hull. The deck and cabin structure are bonded in epoxy creating a clean, continuous, chemically jointed link. No secondary bonding tape slapped in after the fact. No mechanical fastener reliance at the primary seams. This is a monocoque structure, one shell distributing loads evenly. And there's a philosophical layer here that's worth talking about. RM's approach belongs to a minority tradition in yacht building that prioritizes performance cruising, not by making boats luxurious, but by making them efficient. These boats are not meant to be floating condos. They're meant to be traveled in, lived aboard, pushed, tuned, adjusted. They're part of the modern European school of performance cruisers, boats that care more about the feel on the helm and the miles covered in a day than the thickness of the upholstery. The RM 1180 is not a boat for everyone, that's for sure. If your priority is gleaming interior and the aesthetics of classic yacht luxury, there are boats designed to appeal to exactly that. This isn't it. But if your priority is fast, stiff, responsive performance cruiser that treats sailing as something joyful and athletic, the 1180 is one of the most interesting designs I've seen in a long time. And if you care about insulation, repairability, structural efficiency, and the idea that your boat's strength comes from intelligent engineering rather than brute force or mass, then the construction method becomes not just a technical footnote, it becomes part of the story. Because what RM is doing here is not nostalgia. It's not a throwback. It's not wood boats are better. It's composite engineering where wood is used as a structural fiber matrix with epoxy acting as the binding resin. This is technology, not tradition. And that's why the RM 1180 stands out to me. In a world of sameness, this is a boat built on purpose, not convention. And speaking of efficiency, we just posted this article called Reading the Telltales of Your Sales, 
What might seem like a lost art now, dialing in sail trim and shape is my favorite part of sailing. Squeezing every last decimal place out of that knot meter is the whole reason that I'm on the boat in the first place, and this article speaks volumes to me. If you're interested in becoming a faster sailor, or maybe just more efficient, this article is definitely worth a read. I'll leave a link in the description for you. While you're here, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps us out, but also it lets YouTube know that you're into sailing videos, so it'll show you more of them. And hit subscribe so that we can see you again next time.